For a long time, Carlos Tavares has been telling us that the future isn't solely all electric and that there are many other ways to greener mobility. And now it looks like he has finally found the way to make this aggressive EV push obsolete. Stellantis has found a way to cut emissions by 99% and improve fuel efficiency by up to 120 miles per gallon. And you know what's best? It's achievable with an internal combustion engine. Yes, you heard us well. Stellantis has a new revolutionary engine that deletes the need for EVs. But before we start, subscribe, hit the bell button, and stay updated about the latest trends in the automotive industry. Quest for Alternatives the moment it became clear that governments around the world will start with much stricter emission rules, most automakers went on full throttle with the development of battery electric vehicles. But back then, some companies already knew that such a unison approach was not sustainable. Companies like Toyota started working on various alternatives to EVs, technologies like hydrogen fuel cells, hydrogen combustion engines, and methane-powered engines. All these technologies make sense, but the only problem is that, at the moment, they are extremely expensive, which means we are decades away from their practical use. Meanwhile, Stellantis developed something simpler, cheaper, but more effective at the same time. It all started before Stellantis even existed. Back in 2013, PSA Group, which held companies like Peugeot and Citroën, presented its compressed air engine to the public for the first time. At the time, that seemed revolutionary for many reasons. But the bottom line was that the new technology seemed more efficient than classic hybrids, and cheaper as well. PSA expected to start mass production within a few years, but suddenly it all stopped. Because back in the day, it was very hard to find someone who believed in this technology. PSA was left alone. It wasn't able to find a partner for this venture. Several years later, PSA merged with FCA, creating a huge conglomerate of dozens of car brands. And with so many car makers under the same roof, sharing their technologies, Jeep came up with an idea to revitalize Peugeot's project, to implement this revolutionary technology in its vehicles to make large and heavy SUVs like Wrangler more efficient and more eco-friendly. The way compressed air engines work. Before we start with Jeep's plans and announcement, let's learn a few things about the new technology and its revolutionary solutions. As you probably know, the way internal combustion engines work is that they use energy to spin wheels. However, a lot of that energy is wasted once you hit the brakes. Hybrids were the first to solve this issue with regenerative braking, where all that energy from braking gets stored in the batteries that can later run electromotors. With compression air technology, things are quite similar. Once again, there is the benefit of regenerative braking, but in this case, the energy isn't stored in batteries, but rather in tanks, in the form of compressed air. Besides regenerative braking, the way the air is compressed is through the ice engine itself, as the power isn't used just to spin the wheels, but to compress the air as well. Then there's also the possibility to compress air by using other sources of energy while the car is not running. In any case, there are two main ingredients of such a system. One is the tank, where the air is stored at high pressures, usually way over 4,000 psi. Then there's the air engine, which runs on the released air from the tank. Under high pressure, the air expands rapidly and drives pistons, or even a turbine, and the air engine then drives the wheels. All in all, there are three ways we can run these hybrid vehicles. We can do it solely with a combustion engine, solely with an air engine, or mix these two. Unlike hybrid electric systems that are usually based on gasoline engines, compressed air units work perfectly well with any engine – gas, diesel, ethanol, etc. – which significantly increases their potential for commercial use. Jeep will be the front runner. Although Stellantis stepped into the EV development years ago, it's no secret that the company CEO, Carlos Tavares, has never been much of a fan. It may not have been as loud as Akio Toyota, but he stated numerous times that battery electric vehicles bring too many challenges to be considered the ultimate zero emission solutions. That's why he is now pushing pretty hard for the compressed air technology, and according to the latest reports, Jeep will be the first brand to apply it in massive production. The first engine to get hybridized in this way will be the familiar 2.0 liter Turbo 4, an engine that's already available in sole variant or hybrid electric setups. This time it will be coupled with new technology developed by Peugeot, but additionally improved with a couple of new tech solutions. What's also expected to be borrowed from Peugeot's original design is the transmission, as Jeep plans to use the same layout with reduced metal friction and unique lockup converters that prevent any slippage. 
Then all that gets complemented by an advanced selective catalytic reduction and a particulate filter with additives. Consequently, we should see a 90% lower emissions rating and the elimination of 99.9% .9 of particles, according to the French car maker. Yes, you heard us well, the time of environment-friendly Wranglers is coming. What are the benefits? Okay, so you probably wonder now what are the practical benefits of such a design, other than reduced emissions, which is something that's already achievable with electric and hybrid cars. Well, there are many of them. First of all, let's get back to different modes. As we've mentioned a few moments before, these hybrid vehicles will offer you the opportunity to select between running on gas, air, or combining them, which should allow you to use the energy in the most efficient way. If you're on the highway, you can switch solely to gas power and enjoy an efficient and convenient ride. In the city, you can combine two sources or rely solely on air. According to Jeep, the new system will have the ability to run solely by the air engine at a speed of 45 miles per hour or lower, and the range should be long enough to cover your daily needs of commuting. As a result, the company estimates massive fuel savings of at least 50% on average. In some scenarios, Jeep even believes that even 120 miles per gallon are achievable. But fuel efficiency, along with significantly reduced emissions, isn't the only benefit of this technology. As you know, hybrid electric and pure electric cars are impractical for one big reason, battery packs. Batteries require a lot of space, especially in the case of EVs. In most cases, manufacturers have solved this by installing batteries under the floor, but that also brought many compromises, which made EVs bulkier, heavier, and harder to handle in tricky situations. In the case of hybrids, most vehicles are not based on dedicated electric platforms. Instead, engineers are figuring out various places where to store the battery. Usually, it ends up under the rear seats or under the cargo area, which consequently leads to reduced passenger and cargo space. Air tanks, on the other hand, are notably smaller compared to batteries, which leaves many options for engineers to find the right area to place them. It can be under the body, between the chassis rails, while sometimes the tank can fit in the front or rear axle, which also provides protection to the tank. Eventually, just like with hybrids, the tank can be placed under the seat or in the cargo area. In any case, engineers are left with way more options to optimize the interior design. Cost Another big benefit is the cost. As you know, electric and hybrid electric vehicles use batteries, the most challenging aspect of future mobility, because batteries need rare earth elements, such as lithium. The only problem is that the proven reserves are limited, so it's not always so simple to get to it, especially if we consider that most of it is controlled by China. An increasing demand, combined with geopolitical factors, leads to an unstable market, which leads to big amplitudes in terms of prices. And guess what? Lithium and other rare earth elements are already too expensive, so it doesn't surprise that batteries usually account for 40 to 50% of the vehicle's total price. EVs are already way too expensive and out of reach for many, so it doesn't surprise that current EV adoption is at a much slower pace than expected, despite the aggressive push the governments are giving. And even with such high prices, EV makers are losing money on every electric vehicle they sell. Simply said, the production is still too expensive, so car companies are figuring out new ways to cut battery costs. One of them is the introduction of sodium ion batteries, based on materials that are far more accessible and therefore also cheaper than lithium. However, the development of such batteries is still in the early stages, so we are probably years away from mass production. Meanwhile, compressed air engines impose themselves as a logical solution. The production costs are significantly lower, which leads to way lower prices, which would eventually lead to wider audiences embracing this technology and cutting carbon emissions significantly. Having customers in mind As mentioned, Tavares doesn't believe that EVs are the only road to zero emission. Moreover, he pointed out so many challenges that electrification brings with it. Of course, we can always start by questioning EVs zero emission, considering the carbon footprint that EVs leave during their production. Then there is the energy source, as the world still mostly relies on power that comes from burning fossil fuels. So talking about green mobility, where EVs charge batteries from such sources, seems absurd. Then there are all those ethical and environmental concerns that come with mining rare earth elements. But that's just part of the problem. There is also the fact that customers are those expected to carry most of the weight of this electrification. Car makers and other companies won't give up their profit. Instead, cars are getting more and more expensive. 
According to Tavares, such an aggressive electrification and dogmatic ban on internal combustion cars would lead to unmanageable social consequences. With EVs currently being way more expensive than internal combustion cars, such a quick transition would inevitably make car ownership unaffordable for many, particularly the middle class. And we believe that's where technical solutions like Jeep's new compressed air engine come to act, to make this mobility revolution easier for the customers, more efficient and more rational. Do you think that compressed air engines are one of the EV alternatives for the future? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.